uh, since January, a lot of my bookings are just paying me in full. What? Yeah. You see, these are the things that I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> and what? On the invoice, it says, you know, I have it divided, you know, deposit of 50% and then the other 50% pay me the day before. Well, I've had people like, here's the whole thing. I was like, wow. even better, even better. <laughs> you look glamorous. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> My husband says, is that what you're all dressed up for? I go, I'm not a t-shirt. <laughs> all right, it's not that glamorous. Well, I have a special guest today. If you're just tuning in, thank you so much for joining in today's video, we are going to meet one of my designers who has been killing it behind the scenes. And Linda, I cannot wait for people to hear your story because honestly, it's so exciting. All right. So let's start with who are you? Tell us a little about your business. What do you do? And then we'll move on from there. Well, I, my name is Linda Lujan. I am the CEO of Geling the Parties. And I'm located in California, Riverside, California, which is considered the Inland Empire of California. So it covers quite a large uh, area of California, which I will go past it. I've been to Vegas with my parties and I'm hoping to, a friend of mine was asking me, you need to come to Cabo. I says, I'll go, I'll go do parties over there. I do balloons, my, started off with balloons, uh, took a balloon class and it took off from there. I started back in uh, 2018 or 19. Mm -hmm. It was 2019. I took a balloon class because I did one on my own and realized, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> it's too busy enough. <laughs> it's like way too much, right? So are you known for balloons? Is that what our audience would, or you do other things as well? I do do other things. I will do tablescapes and flowers, which is, uh, I used to work for uh, the flower department and uh, for Albertsons for a grocery store and so that's where I learned about flowers and I've always enjoyed decorating and stuff like that and, and parties and decorating for parties and so on and so forth and wedding wedding bouquets I learned how to do all that there how to make boutonnieres how to get better at it anyway and mm -hmm. the great my daughter does it now too so if I can't do it I can call her and get her some work as well so it's that's kind of nice that yeah that stay in the family right the skills they're passed down lovely um so what did your business look like before even reaching out to me I would say like let's talk about who you were where your business was if you know any numbers <laughs> and feel free to share if you feel comfortable but definitely let us know where your business was looking like before meeting me well before you I was definitely not charging enough definitely <laughs> I've showed you my receipts from way back when, and I was like, boy, what was I thinking? What was I doing? But you know what? We, we all start somewhere. We all learn. And I, I'm very grateful to have learned so much from you and to learn and to value myself, you know, and, and just to know that I already knew what the blues were costing me. So I have another friend as well, who's basically going to be my accountant. She's going to start helping me with my numbers. And so she's like, why don't you charge more? And, and even still, even though I've raised my numbers, she just, I just recently did a party for her. And a lot of people say, oh, your friends aren't going to pay. She, she'll pay. She pays whatever. She's like, you make sure and you charge me whatever you would charge anybody else. I don't want to see a discount. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and I That's sent good. it to her and no problem. But yeah, before, before I even met you, my my balloon garlands, I want to say, were maybe 150, maybe 250 at the most. Wow. Now they've doubled. <laughs> so, so, yeah, cool. they're a lot better. And I don't just do balloons with 11 inch. Mines have, and when I do my invoices, I let them know there's 11 inch, there's 5 inch, there's uh, 19 inch, there's 24 inch. Plus, I might, I'm the extra. I have, no, no. It needs a mylar there. Nope, it needs a, a magic star there. So it's, I, my husband's like, okay, let's go. If he goes to me, he goes, you did enough. Let's go. <laughs> so, you want it to look a certain way, right? That's our creative myth. When I do parties, I feel like I'm working on my own party. Like mm -hmm. it's for me. And if it's for me, I want it to look like, wow. You know, I want everybody to walk. That was an epic party. And you know what? Sometimes the balloons and the decorations are really 
what makes the ambiance. It what makes it more. It's what makes it more fun. Just being there and seeing everything is just brings it all together. Right. And that's what I want. Okay, so we heard a little bit about your business and where you were doing after you know before you meet, met me. So what kind of what were some of the challenges that you were facing um, with your event business before joining my program? Definitely not uh, charging the right amount, you know, and even keeping track of my numbers. I guess just really, you know, knowing that that I can go and charge what what I am worth and just go in there and just having to say, okay, this is what it costs. And I would always be afraid to say, it. oh, they're going to say no. And then I thought, they say no, they say no. Someone mm. else is going to come. But still just still just being able to say it, you know, and just, it's probably, all right, you know what? Type it in, send it out. And it's like, if they say no, they say, and then they said yes. I was like, wow, okay. But then with <laughs> you, I realized, you know what? Linda, why aren't you charging more? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, God, I can't even say it enough how much you've helped me oh I didn't pay her guys to say this <laughs> I always gotta put that disclaimer like I'm always taken aback by how much because I feel like you know sometimes even being a coach to you and everybody else is to know that I've helped you but I always feel like you as long as y'all are doing the work it will happen right because that's just my belief I could show you the way and I guess that's what it is that's why I've learned to accept like that, you know, I'm the lighthouse. You just have to get to me and then I'll kind of pave the way for you. And then as long as you do the work, you get it right. And it's not about too about like telling you what to do. It's just what works for you and figuring out, you know, here are the strategies, which one do you want to work on, which will lead you to your success, which feels good. And, you know, understanding your fear versus, you know, something that doesn't serve you long-term. So what fears did you have when you first started your business? Because a lot of people in our industry have a lot of fears that they bring in when they first get started. And I would love to hear, you know, yours of where you were prior to us meeting. I think more than anything was, could I do this? Could I actually do this and be successful? And I think what I've learned is don't worry about it, just do it. And when you start, you know, when, the wheels start rolling and it's like, oh, your work is amazing. Oh, your work. It's like, I've been like, really? Is it, is it amazing? You know, to myself, I'm like, I mean, I appreciate the compliments. Don't get me wrong. But I'm like, when people are like, oh, wow, like, I couldn't believe it. And, and I know that these are people that have seen balloons before. So, but when people have never seen anything like that before, it's like, wow, these, I can't believe people do this with balloons. So that, I think that's what really, really got me to do it because I've actually always hated balloons. I never liked balloons oh, wow. because they were helium, right? They're in the way, they're on back of chairs and they're hitting you on the head or in the middle of the <laughs> table. And it's like, what, what, what's here? It's, it's all in the way. And so it, the, now it's art. Now, if someone was just getting started, right? And this is kind of off script too. What, what advice would you tell them? Because a lot of people who watch my channel, they're going through the same thing, like fear of charging their prices and fear of, you know, I know this is kind of like technically the last portion of my interviews, but since we're already addressing the fears, like you tend, first of all, I just want to give some background knowledge. And Linda tends to always <laughs> help new designers who come into the program. Um, so if you ever thought about joining Party Like a CEO, she is there. I mean, she's busy now, so she doesn't attend all of them. But when she shows up, she is full throttle helping someone else, like paving the way and helping them overcome their challenges. So I want to bring that energy on this video, Linda, because your energy is so contagious. Every, I tell you this all the time. We're on the call and I'm like, oh, I just want to hear her talk again. <laughs> So what would you, what would you tell someone, especially if they were in your shoes with all, you know, these fears of charging, second guessing their own talent? Like, what would you say? If you ever doubt yourself on anything, ask someone, ask someone for their opinion. It might not be what you want to hear and it might, but take it, but take it and know that, okay, you can choose to take that advice or hopefully it's advice. And, and cause I know sometimes family can tend to give or, or friends and give us negative advice, but still ask another balloon artist, ask another balloon artist, 
what do you charge? And I know some don't want to talk about it. They don't want to share. I, like you said, I'm the opposite. I, I'm more than glad to share whatever, you know, ask me questions. Um, I'm more than glad, but ask questions. Cause if, if you don't know and you don't ask, you're always going to be wondering what is the answer. And at least there's, if you can find someone out there that you can communicate with is with, with all your questions, that's a plus right there. Whether it's pricing, whether it's colors, whether it's sizes, uh, what, how should I make a cluster? What should it have? Um, what, how many clusters, clusters do you use in a whole um, eight by eight? Cause I know there's so many, so many different things and so many aspects in this business. What do you charge for delivery? What do you, you know, so ask those questions. Cause there's when in doubt you're, you should always ask. Yeah. That's why I, I created a YouTube channel and I'm starting to share more about what I charge. So I love how motherly you are, but also how transparent you've always been on this journey because with your journey and we'll unfold with some wins of from your business within the program, you've also been such a helping hand for new people who come on in. Let's talk about these wins because either in the program, there was um, big wins, especially number wise, but I want to for first work on like outside of numbers, what was a big win as a CEO of your own event business? And then we'll talk about the numbers in a second. <laughs> Getting my van. Yes. I forgot about that. For sure. Getting oh, your van. That was a big thing. Okay. How's that going for you? Oh, awesome. I love it. I love it. Thank God for my husband. who's like, you need a van like really because he knew i was looking at him he says let's go this he goes when you find the right one we'll go get it so we went and got it and sure enough how i think it's been wow maybe because i got it after i was with you and i started with you in august maybe i got about three months after yeah it was pretty it's pretty quick i was like i think between you and natalie because you both got vans while in the program Yeah. yeah I always tell my designers in my in my Facebook community too. I'm like, brag! You guys need to brag about your wins. <laughs> right now we have a was it show off Sunday, and then my designers are showing off. They throwing their designs <laughs> out there. They're throwing their wins and clients, and I'm like, yes, right? Because I want I, you know, especially as women too. Sometimes we're told not to brag, um, and that can hold us back from stepping into that version. Now I'm gonna. I'm still focusing on the wins, but I'm going to tell everybody, Linda, if I could take a picture of who you used to be versus who you are now, I know you're glammed up, but the aura and like, if you guys can't tell, like Linda had her hair up in a bun, glasses, like well, what's going on, right? I don't know how to do this. <laughs> now <laughs> we're on calls and she's like laid back. I was like, what is this glow? Like... <laughs> I know you're not having more kids, right? But I was just like, I don't know. It's like, you know, it's that beautiful glow. She's like, oh, you know, I've been taking care of myself. Like that's <laughs> another win too I want to stress about too because I think when you take care of yourself as a CEO and just as a person in general, it vibrates everywhere, right? So would you say that was a good win for you as well? Because you completely transformed. Oh, most definitely. I'm working with a personal trainer three days a week. And um the fitness bureau so mm. <laughs> right here we go shout them out <laughs> <laughs> when it was your first like big i guess monetary win how long do you think you were in the program when that happened it wasn't that long after like a few months right it was like yeah. I say, like two this or three called, months this guy had called me and he was the one that i had told you uh that he was willing to help me with my contracts anyways he called me for his birthday and it was, it was, it was a good, pretty good, big win, but not only that, but my bookings have now, there are at least two a weekend, if not, and I'm grateful if I have a weekend off because then I get to catch up. But uh, since January, a lot of my bookings are just paying me in full. What? Yeah. You see, these are the things that I don't know about. <laughs> And what? on the invoice, it says, you know, I have it divided, you know, deposit of 50% and then the other 50% pay me the day before. Well, I've had people like, here's the whole thing. I was like, wow. even better, even better. So to me, when somebody 
gives you all the that's trust right there they're trusting your word your work they value you so to me that speaks volumes to me mm. so and what were how many um events were you booking prior to either joining or even in the beginning on average that i kind of i've always been pretty decent with bookings and anywhere from two to three a month if okay. some some four in one weekend and mm -hmm. which probably has happened like twice for me that's mm -hmm. crazy though it's like yes i'm older and i'm not oh god i need with that i have to make sure i have help on those days so my friend i always check with her now i was like okay do you have this weekend and this weekend uh, hey i need you you cannot book with nobody else there's no way i need you on these weekends so That's I try to get her as soon as I get a phone call, and even if I don't have a deposit, I mark it as pending, and I let her know this is pending, but don't book anything with anybody else because she does help other people. Okay, so I'm your priority. Say this date for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, because I'm booking like two, three. What do you said? Two or three per week now. Sometimes no, now almost every weekend. Almost every weeks. weekend. That is crazy. Yeah. From two to three times per month to every single weekend. And yeah. now you pray for a weekend off. <laughs> yeah. well, I have, this coming weekend, I do have off, which is nice. So we're gonna we're gonna take off and do a little camping trip. And he said, my husband says, don't book anything. So I'm like, okay, I won't. So right, right. Like, no, that's it. Just keep this <laughs> open. That's awesome. So are there any other big wins that you've had um, this past either year or been since you've been with us? Uh, what else? I feel like so much stuff has been happening with everything. Well, my daughter moved out. That's not a win. But for me, it was a win as far as because I got this room. Mm -hmm. And now I have this room where I get to store a lot of my my items. My balloons are of this whole wall almost. And then I have my drapings over here. But there's balloons going across top balloons down here and all in boxes my friend calls me the balloon hoarder she goes you can call me and find whatever color she needs and whatever size she needs not always but most likely she can find it here wow so um so what is the highest amount of money you made in a month so far i think you said it in january it was, or February. i think it was like five something or just under five I, I should have wrote this down, but I know it was okay. like about, it was about five thousand yeah, dollars in a month. Wow, that's and that's so crazy to me because it's just like these are what people dream about doing and booking, and sometimes that it doesn't seem attainable when it comes down to that type of win. What do you think contribute to that success when it comes to getting five thousand dollars per month for your events? Being confident in my pricing. Mm -hmm. Being confident that it's okay to charge. That it's okay you know the, people are going to pay for it the clients are going to come um I, the one thing i've never been worried about is competition it's one thing that i've always known that and i've never been like or even like a jealous kind of person but i've always i don't want to say confident like arrogant but confident just knowing that there's lots of room at the table mm -hmm. room for all of us you know and and i know that the the bookings are coming and i think if anything now i know that when I have a slow month, uh, I want to say back in October, I didn't have anything for the whole month. And here comes October, it's coming, it's here. It's like, wow, I don't have nothing coming next month. Well, somebody had booked me for a huge event. Uh, it was a corporate event. So they, uh, for a fundraiser, so any, either way, they, so they called me up and it was a big event. And next thing you know, a few more phone calls came. And I'm, I'm learning with you, the mindset of knowing it will happen. Mm. It will happen whether it's the money, whether it's the events and the clients, and it and it does. So if anything, don't worry about anything because it's going to happen. So what I've learned to do on those times when I when I catch myself worrying, take it away, turn it into something positive, start focusing on what you need to do here. Mm. Start organizing your room. Start organizing whatever you have in your shed and make sure things are where they belong. And that's when you start finding out, oh my God, I left the cake plate somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. And you know, it's so funny. I was just telling my husband, my husband started to clean his van because he has a mobile repair shop. And I said, and like my sister started cleaning out. I was like, you know, when you get the urge to purge is what I call it. 
um, there's bigger blessings coming in, right? And it happens naturally when you just all of a sudden like, let me just clean out the stores. Let me just, it makes room for, you know, more blessings to come into your life because you're getting rid of things that, you know, you don't need that take up space essentially. And yeah. this is why a lot of people say wealth is a mindset because it truly is like your proof of that. The fact that you had zero clients booked for October and then eventually in 2022 booking $5,000 months right now, either on average or below or above whatever, right? It's only up from here. And I'm, 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 I'm loving that you're understanding that like, don't worry what's in front of you and know that you're completely supported by some higher power, whatever we believe in, there's something out there supporting you. And I love it. So what do you, what, what is the secret or secrets to gaining clients? Cause that's what a lot of people want to know. I know that for sure. I've been asked this from another, uh, another balloon. She has a big j- balloon thing. Even she says, what do you do for your marketing? How are you always busy? And I said, you know what? I'm just always posting. I don't have a Facebook page, but I post what I do. And I post um, my business on there, getting the parties on there, you know, book me. And, but, and then I get old pictures and I get my, I scrap because I don't post everything. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of pictures that I don't always post my business cards. I guess I'm really not too shy. So if I'm somewhere, I, I was at Costco and I saw this lady with a really cute hat because I love hats. I'm like, oh, I love your hat. She says, oh yeah. You know, started, we started talking said, and she gives me her business card. Well, here's my business card, you know? So <laughs> I try to hand it out. I try to put out my business cards wherever I can go. And I'm very fortunate. There's a lot of people that share my business, uh, mm-hmm. whether it's on Facebook pages, whether it's telling other friends. And these are people that I've never even done parties for. That's the crazy part. Oh, wow. And they're sharing my business. They haven't hired me, but they like my work and they tell other people about it. And they tell me, oh, I got your uh, business card from so-and-so. I was like, wow, really? So it's worth it. Hand those business cards out because mm-hmm. it's off. Ah. Yeah, it really does. Especially in the communities that serve um, that your dream clients are in right and I always say this too like your designs are your calling cards they are your business cards so if someone has a really good experience especially the host or whoever hired you right other people are going to be intrigued like who did your you know these um balloons or these decorations so always have that's what who told me oh my husband he was just like always have your business cards I put them in my phone I put them in my car I put them in my wallet I put them in multiple bags because you just never know like you said you just never know who you meet and it might be ideal in that moment in time and you'll be so happy that you were able to pull it out so I always tell people too like especially when I go um my members in um design your dream society the first few lessons are about getting your business cards, right? Getting your email. So that way you look professional. It's not a side hustle. This is a real business that you want to turn it into, even if you're not registered. The best practice is to register, but you know, if you don't do it, at least look the part, right? And then get become registered. So we talked about the wins. We heard about your journey, but I want to really pull back the curtain and really talk about like some tough lessons you really had to learn. So I know what pricing was a big one. Just kind of walk us through. What are some tough lessons you definitely had to learn as a CEO of your business? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, definitely to keep my numbers intact, to keep track of each party. And okay, this is because I already, like I told you, I already have a lot of balloons. So I, I, I will still go and buy more. It's like, I've learned that don't do that. Go into your inventory, check what you have before you overspend. Mm. And that in the beginning, I know I was doing a lot of, and since I was making money, I was able to buy, um, whether it was props, whether it was just, you know, but, but do you need it? Are you going to use it? Don't buy, I've had to learn not to buy things that I don't need. And I can attest to that because I think I like every call, I was like, Linda, do you know your numbers? Linda, do you know your numbers? <laughs> Linda, do you know your numbers? Because numbers is the hardest thing, especially for my creative entrepreneurs, because like usually creative people are not like all about numbers. So they're like, okay, like, I don't know how much it spends or cost me. I just know I charge this, right? right? right. But 
we want to know the numbers and the importance of numbers is because that profit is is what your take home really is. That's the money that you get to live off of. And like you said, go on a camping trip with your family and vacations and buying that house that you want. So it's very important to know the numbers. So what has saved you from that tough lesson? I mean, I know you said you're getting a bookkeeper now, right? Yes. What 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 did you do prior to that though? What I what I have done before Prior to that, I didn't do anything. I just put everything in one bank account. So now I have a separate account that the money goes into. Oh, okay. Um, so what I did in account, so I'm still struggling with it. I'm still not good at it. I'm still struggling with it. That's one of the things that I have to make sure that I'm saving and I'm, I'm making sure that I put away for taxes, for insurance, and even an emergency. If something happens with my vehicle, if I need something fixed on it, I'm going to have to start putting away for that. Well, I have a little bit of savings put away, but I already put it in my head. I'm going to have that I want to have is uh, 10,000 put away in the savings. So I haven't got there yet, but I was talking to the lady at the bank. So to help make it for sure, she gave me that. I should have brought it over here with me. The little thing to wrap the $10,000. She says, here, this is for when you get there, you wrap it in this nice oh <laughs> nice love that and you know what you've been claiming that for a while now yeah. too so i know for sure you'll get to that point because you keep saying it and anytime someone keeps saying it over and over again it's bound to happen so i'm glad that you're doing that um the one thing i will say like for people who struggle with numbers is just like literally every single time you buy something save the receipt for that event put it in a little spreadsheet, right? Or just, you know, just keep, or how much did I spend for this event? And then how much did I make? And then, then you can know how much you can save or, you know, where does that money go? Just to understand where it's going. Because sometimes we can come real blindsided with numbers and it just looks great when you're making a couple of thousand dollars, but you're like, well, where did it all go? <laughs> I don't even know where that money went, right? So if you can't afford a bookkeeper, definitely just keep in track of your receipts. What is coming in? What are you able to spend, you know, utilizing that? So I love that. All right. So we're getting close to the end. So I got a few more questions. So how did having a mentor help your business? It's helped me by one, being accountable mm -hmm. to, to all the things that I need to do. Um, it's just how it's helped me as far as, uh, making sure that my business is going to run the way it needs to be. So I can say, yes, I am a CEO and be proud of it at the same time. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Are you going to, um, this is kind of like off the record. Are you going to invest in like a creative course or, you know, where are you, where's Linda, the CEO going now towards? I actually want to get a bigger van. Oh, okay. Because my, my, as it is, my events are getting a little bit bigger and the amount of balloons that I'm having, because I blow, pre blow up my balloons. So in order to transport them, plus my, if I take my marquees, if I take my whatever additional to my backdrops, this that big circle thing behind me, I had to do two trips because I had to carry that. I had to carry marquees, especially with graduation. So I wanna, that's just for a balloon backdrop. Upset. Mm -hmm. they, I'll do the whole dessert. I don't do desserts, right. but I'll do dessert table setup. So I have, they're getting a little bit more elaborate. So I would like maybe possibly a, a bigger vehicle. My husband even said, he goes, you're going to need a bigger van because <laughs> we had to transport in two vehicles. We have a, you know, a truck that we're able to use, fortunately. You know, my program, especially with Party Like a CEO, it's a six month program. When you joined, it was four months, right? And it expanded to six because I saw the challenges that people like you, they needed to learn how to onboard um, team members. But to watch my designers past the six months, right? Even heading into a year has been such an incredible, like I almost feel very privileged and blessed to watch it unfold because it's something it's so, I love to see the beginning stages. I feel bad for my designers who come in because they are, they're, it's on the struggle bus right now in the beginning, but to watch the magic unfold and like seeing where you are now in less than a year, that's so crazy. Like I can imagine what it will be like for you in August and which makes a year of technically knowing you and you joining us. So kudos it. to you, right? So I don't know if we answered this already, but how much money were you making in the beginning versus how much you're making now. Do you know that number? 
I don't know that number once again because I'm so great at numbers. Um, I know that my parties were averaging maybe about $300, $350, probably not even more than $400 for a party. Um, the minimum of my parties are probably anywhere from seven to $800 on, on a, wow. a weekend. So that's if I do two good. parties on a weekend, then that's pretty good for me. That's really good. Wow. And have you been able, so I know you said you had help. Have you been able to onboard like a team member for your team? I have, I have two. Oh, nice. have, yeah. So I have two, but I need to get a third one. Definitely. Wow. Look at the champagne challenges going on. Here. That's what my, my mentor calls it. She's like, they're champagne problems. You're darn right. Cause like some people are like, dang, I can't even get one event. <laughs> She's got two people and now she needs a third person helping her. Like it, it is possible. And this is why I love sharing stories like this because it's such an inspiration that's what my whole youtube channel is about right to inspire others so my last question for you i i want to say two questions what maybe what is something you would sh- you want to share for someone getting started right and then maybe kind of turn it around into what would you tell your past self because the linda i met a few months ago is not the linda i'm seeing here today so i would love to hear you know, your advice for, especially people who are just getting started. I would tell Linda what my husband would always tell me is don't be afraid of success. And I think that's a big fear for a lot of people is knowing how big you can get. Mm, That's good. That's definitely, you know, and, and not be, once again, not be arrogant about it, but yeah, don't be afraid of it either. And you've taught me that you've taught me, uh, I was nervous about something. I can't remember what it was. And I had talked to you about it and you had mentioned to me how being nervous is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a good nervous. And I've learned that, that, okay, to be nervous is not bad. It means something good. Something good is happening because it's a fear that you're facing. And, and so you can overcome it. You can overcome whatever fear it is, but it's a good description that my husband had always told me says, what are you afraid of when it's dark? What can you see? Nothing. Then you're afraid of nothing. Just go in there, face it, do it. Right. Right. Well, I love that. And I completely forgot. I said that too, because now it's like, it's hitting me, you know, having a trouble still trying to upload this six figure <laughs> journey video. And you're like, but what, are, but what are you scared of? It's like how big it can get right? Yeah. How big telling your truth and stepping into the version that you've desired for so long, how, how it can come true as quickly or, or even faster than you've imagined, but right? That's why not? That's yeah. why you're doing it, right? To get there. And if it happens fast, then, then even better, I think. I know, I know with all of us, you have just, all of us, not only the friendship among everybody, I think that and the camaraderie is just it's really great and we all love it. I know I do when I talk, when you're not there and we talk to each other, we're there to help each other. I love that. Um, it's just, and I love seeing how successful everybody is becoming. That's mm-hmm. the part. Yeah, I love that too. So I will say this is just that I, I love the community we've created, right? In, in Design and Dream Society, it's, it's growing, but in part like a CEO, there's a real tight knit, family and I and I want to keep it that way you know and I would love to like go on a retreat with you guys now that COVID's kind of like calmed down and we feel a little more comfortable going out people still having events like why not have some time to really like dive in like I really want that because I think the energy is even bigger in person right so I'm claiming it at right now maybe 2023 or even at the end of this year we can get together and be like hey let's go to a nice hotel talk money talk business talk family talk challenges talk whatever for the next few days and be amongst powerful people in the industry and create space for others to grow with us so I love that Linda any last minute thoughts or statements you would like to share with someone watching this just i have to say that if you don't go with justine then you're missing out because at you know i know i've learned so much i know i've grown a lot as old as i am there's still room to grow Mm -hmm. you know and and don't don't let age stop you don't let not knowing things stop you 
ask the questions, like I said, um, and there you are to answer them. I love that you are always there to answer our questions, whatever we have, questions we may have, and you, you answer them for us, especially in our Zoom meetings. That's so great that we can ask those questions and help each other out. Yeah. yeah. Just thank I love you. it. Thank Aww. you. You're welcome. Well, I appreciate your, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your, your um, testimony um, because it is a beautiful story. And I just knew like right away, I, I think we were on a call and I was like, Linda, I need to talk to you because people need to hear it. Right. Cause you know, the one thing I love reading is like all the comments down below a video and watching people get so inspired by someone else's story because they connect so much with people just like you. So I truly appreciate you taking the time out in the day. Um, for those of you who are watching, this is the only time I actually do promote Party Like a CEO. Normally I don't, but I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested. There'll be some information, whether it's open or closed. Feel free if you have any questions, DM me. I'm always there to answer. And I just want to say thank you to Linda. Linda, you're an amazing designer. You're an amazing CEO and, and a woman entrepreneur or just a boss, you know, just in general. Uh, and to watch your story completely evolve and continue to evolve has been an amazing experience. If anybody wants to reach out to Linda or follow her, I'll leave her all her information down below. That way you give her a follow, let her know you found her on this video. I'm sure she would love to hear that. And I hopefully you guys will see the next one. We got more testimonies when it testimonials when it comes to our designers. So be on the lookout because it's coming. <laughs> but other than that, I guess we are done.